This is three questions with Melissa Wright. There we go. Do you know I have theme music? Did you know I had theme music? Did you know that was happening? No, I didn't, but I like it. I'm doing a little That's dance right. over here. <laughs> That's right. Hey, so I'm actually with Melissa Wright. She is, uh, this is, a, I don't know if I should have been shocked, but she kind of told me I should have been too. She's a math teacher and a dance teacher in New Brunswick uh, on the eastern east coast of Canada. And I'm struggling because... Uh, we actually just moved to Florida, which is Eastern Standard Time. I haven't been able to stay awake for uh, a game, and she is actually an hour ahead of me. So I don't even know that's a time zone that even exists. But I guess you are kind of in the ocean, right? So that is kind of makes sense a little bit. Yeah, we're kind of floating out there, you know. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> right. Hey, so Melissa is actually she just has a book available called Inspired Moments That Matter. And we're going to talk more about that on a longer version of the podcast. But, you know, for people that maybe don't listen to that one, uh tell just give us like a you know one minute what is the book what's it about and you know why people should pick it up in one minute you got one minute to do it oh that's gonna be tough um uh, so uh inspired moments that matter it's basically my journey as an educator uh with culture and climate and student leadership and provides practical ideas that you can use in your school as well to help move your school forward and create a positive environment for everyone as well it also includes um, some stories of people that have inspired me and moments that made all the difference to me as an educator. Right. And I think that's like, I think that's a really powerful, you know, thing that we need to be sharing right now because it, we can be kind of mired in negativity. And I, I feel there's like a little bit of, sometimes there's a movement, not only in education I've seen in education, but other parts is like a lot of people are not really happy with maybe where they're at and not, are they just unhappy with it they want to make sure that other people close to them are unhappy with mm -hmm. it because it kind of validates their unhappiness right and i think hey like if you don't like your job I, i'm like a big believer that some of the best things i've ever done were leave positions right yeah. and that that's a good thing too but you know we we do work with kids every day and we want to make sure that um they see possibilities where sometimes uh others can see obstacles. So I love it. And uh, just talking to you a little bit before I can feel your positivity. So I know people are gonna love this book. But let's get into the three questions here. So um, you currently teach right now at a high school level. But you look back at your career and you think of some of the teachers that probably inspired you You even mentioned that you know, you share some of those stories in your book, who's a teacher that really inspired you and why? Um, well, I'd have to go back to uh, Heather Malko. She was my grade 10 French teacher and also my uh, student council advisor. She was just one of those teachers like, well, first of all, she came in in the middle of the year, we had a teacher that went out on leave and she just kind of picked up the pieces right. uh, where that person had left off. Or we'll say this, our class was not the easiest class in the school building, <laughs> um, but she made that thing run like a well-oiled machine. And I remember in grade 11, having a conversation with her about running for student council president. And I was kind of like, I don't know, you know, should I do it? Like, I'm not a popular kid. I was the kid that liked math, obviously, because I teach math. And she she was like, why not? What do you have to lose? Like, seriously, it's a few pieces of paper, a speech. You have nothing to lose. So why not give it a shot? And like that moment was the moment that changed everything for me. It made me think, yeah, like it's not that much that I have to, to that's going to make a difference. You know, if if this doesn't go rise right, up some paper, right? Like. Mm -hmm. It's not like my whole world is going to be shattered if I don't get in to student council. I could probably get involved in another way. So, and she was always there and always believed in me. And still to this day, she's one of my closest friends and we work together on the uh, New Brunswick Student Leadership Association. She's the, uh, the secretary. So it's really come full circle because she took me to that leadership conference as a student. And now we get to run that conference together. So it's, That's awesome. Yeah, it's just her, it's her belief in me as a high school student and even as an adult to do these things um, that has really pushed me forward and kept me going. All right. So it's Heather Macko. Am I saying that? Malco. 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 All, right. Yeah. All right. Heather Malco, if you're listening. <laughs> uh, Aaron, right. So actually, I'm curious. Did the teacher leave because of your class? Was that? I, I maybe, I don't know. I was the quiet kid in class, so oh, I'm right, not really, right. I don't this really remember. No one else is you, right? Yeah. No one else did it, right? <laughs> well, I, I love that story because I think I, I've talked about this quite a bit. Sometimes the biggest regrets we have, we often talk about things that we regret doing in the past, but it's actually things that we didn't take part in. That's right. And if you didn't maybe get that little coaxing, you probably would 
you know, still think about it a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, not necessarily in a good way is that you didn't take that opportunity, right? And so, you know, uh, my mom, you know, she she's always about worst thing in here is no, right? And then you move on, but it's better than, you know, it's better to hear no than to never know. And so I, I, I love that. So um, we, we talked about some of the people that inspired you, not only at teaching level, but administrator level too. Mm-hmm. So, um, you currently teach, you know, at a high school level, when you think of, you know, a great principal, a great assistant principal, maybe even a superintendent, who's someone that really inspired you and why? Um, well, actually I have two. So, um, the first one would be my very first principal, Bob Monroe, shout out to Bob Monroe. Um, Bob Monroe. um just so first of all, Bob Monroe is about six foot five. So really, really tall guy. And um, everyone, he's just one of those people that everybody respected. And you knew that he respected you as an educator. Um, you know, he hired me as a first year teacher. And as a first year teacher, he he sent out this email to the whole staff. I remember saying, there's this workshop on Jocelyn's Renaissance. Is anybody interested in going? And I think within 30 seconds of him sending that out, I had replied and said, yes, please pick me. Um, and I went to that workshop and he didn't even question it when I came back with all these ideas of what I wanted to do to move our school forward. And I'd only been there for a year. He'd been principal for like, I don't know, 25 years or something like that. So for him to just, you know, listen to me, first of all, to, to listen to what I had to say and the ideas that I have, but then to actually let me run with it mm-hmm. was huge. Like it, you know, made me feel valued as an educator in our building and that, he believed in my ability to help move our school forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's like, you know, it's powerful with that. And one of the things, um, you know, I, I work with teachers, I, you know, I haven't been a formal teacher, you know, for a while, even though I do teach, you know, classes at the, at the university level. Um, but like in a K-12 classroom and you see kind of comments like, Oh, like, you know, you didn't teach long enough, blah, blah, blah. And I'm mm-hmm. like, you can learn from anybody if you're willing to be open to it, right? Like you can learn from your students, you can learn. And I I feel like if you actually say in that, how could actually shut up some of your first year teachers? Like they're Mm -hmm. not going to say anything because like, who am I to share? And I, and I truly believe you can learn from your, your kids in your classrooms. You can learn from people in the first year. You can learn from people that are almost out the door. uh, If you're willing to find those things. And I think that you want people sharing those ideas. Right. And it's kind of that. and, And I love that. Um, he did that because obviously not only did it had an, have an impact on you to this day, but yeah. obviously on the people that surround it. And I know you said you had a second one. So who is that? Yeah. So it's actually my current principal, Joellen Jensen. Um, she's amazing. You kind of um, like have to say your current principal. You can't. <laughs> uh, but no, there's one particular line that she said to me that has stuck with me. So a few years ago, I p- applied for an SPR position. So it's like a department head. Yeah. And I unfortunately was not one of the successful candidates. And so it was one of those things she called, you know, me up to the office and, and, you know, said to me, you know, unfortunately you weren't the successful candidate. And you know, when your mind starts racing, you're like, oh my gosh, right. what am I going to do? How am I going to be viewed? Blah, blah, blah. And then she said to me, but you are still a leader in this building. Right. So that sentence has forever stuck with me to, to, you know, remind me that I don't need a position to be a leader. Anybody can make an impact that wants to make a difference. Yeah. And it's actually, I cannot remember who asked me this, but it was like just recently, they said, how do you define leadership? I said, leadership is the ability to move people forward in a positive manner. That's it. And so when you look at it through that lens, that could be, again, you know, any, any position, any person within our organization, it's how do you, and and like, you're like, what about if you lead them forward in a negative manner? I'm like, well, I guess maybe, but you know, I guess there may be some leadership qualities there. And Melissa actually warned me about this, that there might be a bell, which tells you Melissa is actually currently teaching right now. Not like you're not like ignoring no. <laughs> no. the end of the school day, but you know, uh, which, is, which is really cool. So um, I absolutely, you know, it's kind of neat that you told a story about someone who, who actually inspired you to get a position that, you know, you, you, you did get, and then one that inspired you and you didn't get the position, how you learn lessons from both, which I exactly. absolutely love. And so now um, you, you, you've written a book, you've, you've done a, tons of different things, you're still currently teaching, but I guarantee that even though you had lots of share when you were teaching in your first year, there are things you could wish you could go back and fix. So like if you could go back to your first year teacher self, what advice would you give? 
Um, first of all, never doubt the impact that you're making because you never realize what interaction or small thing that you say, to, whether it be to your students and or your colleagues, is mm -hmm. going to have on someone because we don't know what anybody is is dealing with or going through at any particular time. And I think to a lot of it is like, don't sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. That's as a first year teacher, you know, I felt that, oh, that everything has to be perfect or, you know, this lesson didn't go well. Oh my goodness, it's the end of the world. But you know what? It's it's through failures sometimes that we learn the most, right? And we get okay. how we get, we get better. Like I remember my department head saying to me, and, and this for me was a huge moment of reflection. I don't see it as her being negative, but her saying to me, you know, like, have you really thought like, is teaching what you really want to do? Right. And that just like, oh, knock the wind right out of me. So like, right. yes, I, I love kids, but I was like, wow, am, is that coming across? So like, I need, I would think I was so, I don't know if uptight's the right word or stuck in my head that I wasn't coming across as the person that I really was and the positivity and those things I wanted to put out there. So her sentence really kind of just like slapped me in the face and made me stop and step back for a minute and say, wow. I really need to think about this impact that I want to have on these kids and, you know, show them that I really do love what I'm doing and make sure I'm trying to do that, you know, who, who every day. Was who was it that said that to you? Who was my, de that? my department head at the time. So, so, okay. I'm like, a, I, this, I'm a big believer in this, right? So there's probably like, you know, probably a reason that was said and not necessarily like, you know, it was like to help mm -hmm. grow. It wasn't yeah. like you need to get the hell out of here kind of thing. Yeah, right? exactly. I am like, I, I have, I, I love that you shared that because I, I struggle when someone says, when I ask like, what's really good about your principal? And they're like, they just get out of my way. And I'm like, well, like, that's not really that good because they should help you grow. Right. Like if they're, yeah. you know, like you kind of have to pick and choose, right. There's sometimes you just get out of the way and let people go. But there's like, you know, I, I think a lot of people leave organizations because they feel they're not growing anymore, that they're not mm -hmm. being mentored. And I think actually, some of the best teachers we've lost in the profession have outgrown their organization and it was people just getting out of their way. And they're like, no, I want to be pushed. Yeah. I want to get better in that too. Right. So I love that. That's what you actually shared. But the other thing that you shared, that I think is really important is that if you truly genuinely care about kids in your first year, that will always have an impact on kids, even though your pedagogy is still, you know, uh, and will always continuously approve, right? And I right. think that, that to me is is really valuable, right? And it shows like even when we're at our weakest, maybe in our career, or we know the least amount, we still can have like an impact that lasts forever. And teachers like a teacher that entered your classroom in the middle of the year because you chased another one out, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hey, so thanks, Melissa, for being on the podcast. And like I said, uh, you can actually click the link um, in the description down below. Check out Inspired Moments That Matter. Melissa, thanks for, uh, for being on the podcast today. And everyone, thank you so much for listening. That's it, Melissa. That was it. Thank you.